Someone ought to tell Senator Ted Cruz that when you're defending Nazi salutes at school board meetings, you're already losing. Involve a Nazi salute. That's one of the examples. My God, a parent did a Nazi salute at a school board because he thought the, the, the policies were oppressive. General Garland is doing a Nazi salute at an elected official. Is that protected by the First Amendment? Yes, it is. Of course, the issue here isn't the First Amendment. The issue is the galloping insanity that's infecting our civic life. Where even mock Nazi salutes can be rationalized because they've been normalized, in large part by right-wing members of Congress' performative outrage over mask and vaccine mandates during America's deadliest pandemic. This drumbeat of disinformation has resulted in unhinged accusations, harassment, and threats directed at school board members across the United States. We, we know who you are. We know who you are. We know who you are. You, you, are. you can we leave freely, know who you are. but we will find you and we know you who you are. You will never be allowed in public who again. Who you are. And I'm going to come for everybody. So as you can see, fists are now flying, all of this on live television. You are allowing child abuse. You, with your snotty little face, you're allowing it as well. No! Hey, John, please don't resist. You guys, don't resist. This is, a, this is an unlawful arrest. And because I chose to speak, I'm now being arrested. None of this is normal. Not this side of desegregation debates, anyway. And it was in response to these reports, as well as a request from the National School Board Association for federal help, that Attorney General Merrick Garland released a memo on October 4th ordering federal law enforcement to meet with state and local authorities to discuss strategies for dealing with this disturbing trend. And in the very first paragraph, Garland wrote that while spirited debate about public policy matters is protected under our Constitution, that protection does not extend to threats of violence or efforts to intimidate individuals based on their views. But the order was intentionally mischaracterized as part of a government plot to de designate concerned parents domestic terrorists, a distortion that was repeated over and over again on right-wing talk TV over the past few weeks. And because many Republican senators seemed to get their information mainly from partisan echo chambers, at yesterday's hearing with Garland, they kept referring to those mischaracterizations as fact rather than apparently actually reading the memo. I just have to ask you, would you really honestly put parents in the same category as a Terry Nichols or a Timothy McVeigh? My God, absolutely not. Then why, why would you ever release a memo? It is so over the top. Senator, there's nothing in the memo that, uh, that, that in any way draws any comparison, anything like that. This memo is about violence and threats of violence. It's not Sir, I have to tell you that that may be your opinion. And you know, many times perception is reality. And that's in some ways the crux of the problem. There is no reference to parents or terrorism in the Garland memo. None. And that's not a matter of opinion. That's a matter of fact. And as the late Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan used to remind us, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. But that's what we're missing in America right now. Common sense and common decency and common facts. And that's a result of this hyperpartisan misinformation efforts that create a perception of oppression unrelated to reality. Those false perceptions can then be used to justify irrational rage. It's an extension of why bowing down to the big lie is still so dangerous because only fanatics don't care about facts. And that's your reality check.